meeting and uh, the only downside of this meeting is none of the gentlemen or none of the young ladies at the back are asking questions. Please, please do. This is for you. Uh, we learn from you as well, so please do uh, feel encouraged to come up and ask questions. Uh, <clears throat> so we, we know that the purpose of a knee is, uh, of a total knee is to uh, give a functional mobile and a pain-free knee. In the ankylosed knee, this is particularly true because it uh, is intended to improve your working, uh, walking ability, increase the range of movements, uh, pain relief in the fibrous ankylosed knee, and at the same time to ensure that you get a stable knee. So there are various uh, uh, pathological conditions uh, that will cause ankylosis, the degenerative osteoarthritic knees, predominantly the inflammatory, the post-traumatic infective, surgical arthritis, is they are the stiff knees, and uh, in a variety of uh, uh, miscellaneous uh, disorders like psoriasis and the hemophilic arthropathy. I think we need to, to start by defining what ankylosed knees are. So in literature, anything that with less than 50 degrees of movement is defined as an ankylosed knee, which means a 15 degrees or more of uh, FFD or less than 75 degrees of flexion. And we will need to differentiate between the surgically fused and the spontaneously fused knees. The other point is that knees can be ankylosed both in flexion and in extension. Extension ankylosis uh, etiology is myositis ossificans, uh, quartz contracture, intraarticular adhesion, and fetal abaha. Uh, flexion ankylosis post HTO bone, bony blocks and uh, intraarticular adhesions. Rheumatoid arthritis are a cause of either. Degenerative knees, large osteophytes, both anteriorly and posteriorly, will cause stiffness of the knees, and these need to be addressed both in terms of exposure and alignment. <clears throat> so what are the indications of a, a fused knee, ankylosed knee? Bilateral ankylosed knees are an absolute indication. Knees ankylosed in non-functional positions. Uh, earlier we used to say that knees ankylosed in a, in a good functional position, you may leave them because they cause no pain. But now with increasing demands, most patients demand uh, flexibilities and, and they would constitute an indication. So all inflammatory and degenerative arthropathies would cause uh, an indication for, uh, for a total knee arthroplasty. In our book, any knee that is surgically fused or a knee that has adhered uh, skin condition, multiple sinus marks, uh, evidence of reflex sympathetic dystrophy or a recent uh, infective episodes are absolute contraindications. We particularly like to highlight surgically fused knees should not be taken down. So you want to evaluate these, these are very, very difficult situations. Do a preoperative CT scan to evaluate cysts and the quality of the bone. And it also helps to understand the soft tissues. If there is a preoperative contracture, this will cause postoperative stiffness, and this is very well described in literature. And last but not least, you want to tell your patients, counsel them that the range of movements that they'll get after an ankylosed release will be substantively less than those of primary total knee arthroplasty done for degenerative or rheumatoid knees. Now, when you look at the challenges, there are several. Uh, lack of exposure, it's a difficult to expose. Uh, you need to think of uh, extensile approach, difficulty in identifying lines, uh, your joint line, risk of ligament or soft tissue, aversion, balancing, flexion extension gap, component malpositioning, uh, aligning your extensive mechanism, petal tracking, avulsion of the collateral ligaments, and finally, difficulties in wound closure. In one word, everything about an ankylosed knee is difficult. So how do you approach this? The, typically, you have the exposure options, various uh, options described. Rectus, you saw a typical uh, tibial tubercle osteotomy uh, that was described uh, just now. You can do skeletonization. In our book, all knees are addressed by a rectus snip. We don't do osteotomies, we don't do uh, vivaplasties, we do not do skeletonization. Do a good rectus snip and it'll get you out of trouble always. And in terms of identifying joint lines, I use the TE axis or the petalar position, and again, the preoperative use of a CT scan is very useful. If it's multiply scarred, use the lateral most incision. I won't have a very tight adhered knee. Use your plastic surgery colleague to use tissue expanders so you get good skin. The worst thing is that you struggle through this, put in an implant only to find that the skin has broken down, so you don't want to do it. If there are multiple scars, if there are transfer scars, they're not an issue, just go at right angles, and you'll get a good exposure. 
In terms of joint line identification, the most consistent line is 2.5 to 3 uh, centimeters distal to the transepicondral axis or in relation to the petal tendon. So these are just some schematic um, diagrams uh, representing and showing you the various types of exposure options. So typically, as I said, medial parapet, midline incision or the lateral most, uh, you use uh, medial parapetalar incision and then you go in and do uh, your exposures. <clears throat> Again, at uh, the, the line of osteotomy in a bony ankylosed knee, the anatomy is well preserved. If it is spontaneous and it is uh, completely altered in a surgically fused knee, so yet again I would reiterate, do not try to take down a surgically fused knee. And use an osteotome at the posterior part so that you can do an osteoclasis and stay out of trouble. This is a very quick video of a, a petalofemoral ankylosis. Uh, so you basically um, take down the petalofemoral ankylosis with a sharp osteotome. Uh, this has been done with a rectus snip, as I might add. And this will allow you to evert your patella or at least move it to the side. Um, again, we are talking of the really sort of difficult knees where this complete bony ankylosis between the femur and the tibia. You make your proximal osteotomy about 2.5 centimeters distal to the transepicondylar axis. That's your axis line. That's your joint line. And again, when you, when you take, uh, take a narrow blade, don't go all the way to the back particularly in, an in knees ankylosed in, in extension. And as you do it, you'll be able to work your way through and basically take out this vapor of bone, and that gives you your flexion space and your extension space. And the remarkable thing about uh, all of these is try and preserve your collateral ligaments and your petal tendon. Externally rotating the tibia helps. Recreate your gutters. And if you do, if you're unfortunate enough to have a burst, these are some of the techniques that we have described in the Journal of Knee Surgery. You can use uh, direct repairs, sutures, and augmentation with semi-T uh, grafts. Uh, uh, almost about 15 years ago, we uh, published our results of 86 knees with a mean follow-up of 9.5 years. And uh, knees that were um, ankylosed in extension needed a fairly extensive quadriceps relief to improve function but the quality of uh, range of movements stayed over time. Uh, this is a technique which uh, we use quite extensively, particularly for those knees that are ankylosed in, in extension. Take a broad osteotome, run it all the way, almost up to the isthmus you should be able to put here. You can see that we've gone almost about five or six inches. It's very, very safe, goes subperiosteally, and that will allow you to release this, uh, the quadriceps tendon. Interestingly enough, Again, as a CR surgeon, most of these knees have been treated by CR uh, options. The reason for it is even in these bony ankylosed knees, you see the PCL vestige. Um, and out of this cohort that we described, 62 of the 86, almost 74% were CR knees. Uh, you want to maintain stability, and you do that by maintaining the soft tissue envelope. Once you do that, you'll find that very basic primary implants, CR implants, PS implants will work quite well. Uh, there are outcome studies, and the point that I'd like you to highlight, to focus on is the complication rate, 63%, 24%, 43%. So it's a, it's a surgery that's fraught with a lot of complications. Yet again, you see 23, 41. That's our uh, series, 15%. And uh, you, you need to be cognizant of the fact that you can run into uh, trouble at almost every stage. Our commonest complications that we have encountered was uh, fractures per op, uh, fractures three of the medial femoral condyle, one of the tibial plateau, uh, wound in issues with four superficial, one deep infection. We've had no neurovascular complications and we had heterotopic <laughs> classification in three of our patients. So you have short-term complications. The range of movements that recover are recover slowly because of uh, wound problems, hematoma, or hemarthrosis. You want to be particularly careful in those patients where uh, avulsions have happened. Uh, put them on range of motion uh, CPM type of uh, issues. Uh, and in patients who have had reconstruction of the petalar tendon, uh, the challenge is because you have to immobilize this in extension, they usually will lose flexion in the long term. Again, the choice of implants, if your MCL is intact, use your CRPS type. If your MCL is compromised by any reason, use the most constrained type of an option. And if you do have any doubts about the conformity or the quality of bone, use a stem. Uh, 
Um, uh, Dr. Bhan from Ames uh, reported this in 2008, uh, and um, uh, he alluded to the fact that outcomes are better in patients with stiff knees than in patients with ankylosed knees. This is our uh, article in uh, 2005, 2006. We have published the a long-term outcome of this in 2019 in the seminars in arthroplasty, and we presented our work at the American Academy as well. Just some examples of knees that enclosed in about 60 degrees of flexion. This is the pre-op, this is the post-op, um, uh, again, using a CR. Uh, this is almost a 17-year follow-up of this lady. Uh, bony ankylosis in flexion uh, and treated with a primary knee with stem extension. Extension uh, ankylosis, bony ankylosis, rheumatoid, as you might imagine. Again, uh, treated with primary implants, and this patient has uh, done quite well. These are her immediate post-op x-rays within a few uh, days of her index surgery. In conclusion, the uh, TKR in the ankylosed knee is a viable alternative and offers these very disabled patients an excellent alternative.